Greetings, this is the Sexy, and welcome to a rather special episode of Musings on Serious Fun. What I'll be doing here is simply reading a passage from the Year in Review article that I wrote for Shaktak at the close of 2020. This represented a fundamental shift in our internal policy, one which has never been more relevant than now. This topic is a serious one, it's heavy, and for anyone else out there grappling with these sorts of problems, I hope this helps to give you perspective on how we've chosen to approach them. This video and my talk will be verbatim from the article itself. I will not be closing with a special outro for this, rather the video will end when the section ends. This section was titled as Reflecting on Reality. Let's begin. When it comes down to it, Shaktak is a group where behavior matters. It's one in which you treat each other respectfully as fellow human beings with empathy and compassion. We look out for each other, this year being a prime example of that. We are inclusive and exemplify the paradox of tolerance in which we have no tolerance for the intolerant. This is how legends like Mr. Haha ha, Just Testing are born. We don't accept that bullshit and never will, and a hint of any of those negative attributes in a prefing or otherwise are grounds for immediate expulsion. Racism has no place here, nor does sexism, bigotry, xenophobia, anti-LGBTQ sentiments, or anything else in the general vicinity, or for that matter, fascism. We are accepting and welcoming. We are a safe space for people from all walks of life, all orientations, and all genders. We're a community. Many of us are like family to each other. I like to think that most of our members intuitively understand these aspects, even if they aren't explicitly spelled out in our intro material. I don't like the idea of having written rules on such matters, because if you're a decent person, you don't need a reminder not to be a racist piece of shit. Being that racist piece of shit is going to be caught and actioned on, and that kind of sentiment won't find the oxygen here to survive. But you didn't say I can't be racist is not an excuse that would ever fly here. Outside of our group, this is simply not the norm. More than a few year interview emails talked about joining other Discord servers, expecting to see something akin to baseline current Shaktak cordiality between participants, and being rudely surprised by just how uncommon that is. It's easy for administrations to avoid conflict, turn a blind eye, or otherwise permit harmful social behaviors to flourish. This has even happened in satellite Shaktak Discord servers this year, which has been frustrating to see. And it even happened in Shaktak in the pre daisy era. While we are not alone in how we behave within our server these days, the accountability we demand, there are seemingly fewer of us than we'd like to see in the grand scheme of things, and even just a bit of distance can cause people to become lax with regards to these expectations. All of this is simply a reflection of the larger context of politics of humanity itself. What we are as a community is not the natural state of things. It's something that must be built on a strong ethos and maintained through diligence. And it's far too easy to let things slip. What we have here isn't an accident. And it's taken a great deal of work to develop and sustain. It's easy for someone on the outside looking in to assume that, like many groups formed around a military simulation, we must have a predominantly conservative membership. Even within the group, it's easy to assume what you want to believe about those around you, whichever way those assumptions happen to go. The truth of it is rather different. What I read in the year in review emails this year had themes that were highly encouraging to see. I wasn't entirely sure if I'd talk about this in detail in the year in review. It wasn't until I'd finished reading all the emails from all of you that I decided that this was something that needed to be said. I talked about some of this last year, particularly as it related to people who'd previously been members. This year is a bit of a different focus. If you follow me on Twitter, you know my views on the political climate these days. I keep it out of shack deck for the most part. Reflecting on the moment we're in right now, that needs to change at least for as long as I write this section. I have an obligation to speak truth here, and that's what we'll be doing now. This is serious, and it needs to be said. These last four years as an American have been a rough ride. This last year in particular took the crown as the shittiest year in memory. Over the course of this, we've all been exposed to things we hadn't considered before. I won't speak for any of you, though many of you spoke for yourself in this regard in your interview emails, and I was heartened by the themes, but I can give a perspective of my own, that of someone who was apolitical or even conservative prior to 2016, and who is anything but that now. The parallels I can draw between our real-world political shitstorm and various things I've had to deal with from running Shaktak over the years are many, and give this an immediacy that otherwise wouldn't be so acute. The world we live in is increasingly one of information warfare, of polarization, 
of tribalism. Truth is under attack, and as humans, we simply aren't equipped to naturally handle what we're being subjected to. The weaponization of lies, the subtle influences and corruptions of influencers, the rise of shameless and never-ending gaslighting, and the adoption of the firehose of falsehoods as a primary political tool are all combining to wreak havoc on the world we once knew. Never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined we'd be where we are now as a society and as a people. Never would I have thought so many would be okay supporting someone who actively detests their kind and wouldn't piss on them if they were on fire. The idea of the country and a large part of the population being under the control of and ultimately okay with a malignant narcissist is still hard to accept. It speaks to deep issues within our species as a whole, as well as the potency of techniques meant to exploit our weaknesses and pit us against each other. Many year interview emails talk about how the current political shitstorm has impacted their lives, often in the form of causing rifts to form within their family. I can relate. I've had to cut comms with certain family members as a result. I see people differently than I did before all of this, and I see the problems facing us in an entirely different light. Toxic individualism has metastasized in grotesque ways throughout this ordeal. And as I said, the parallels between these issues and things I've experienced through running a community like ours over the years are disturbing. What continues to be heartening, though, is seeing how much camaraderie exists within Shaktak, how much people look out for each other, how much they care, how much they try to help. Nothing can diminish that in my eyes, and I'm immensely proud of it every time I hear or read a story relating to it. And this year's emails were full of that. Empathy and compassion are core values, and we have them in spades. One aspect of Shaktak that is particularly relevant in these increasingly tribal us-versus-them times is the notion that we care about who you are as a whole person, not just who you present yourself as being. It's why behavior outside of the group matters. If you treat fellow members well, but turn to a raging asshole elsewhere, you are not welcome here. It's the same as watching a friend treat service staff like shit. It's a reflection on that friend, and at least for me, it's reason enough to end that relationship. This has never meant more than it does now, where we have large chunks of the population who are too blinded by their politics to be compassionate and considerate towards others. COVID has brought out a selfishness in many that has always existed, but was never so apparent as it is now. The simplest example of that ability to think or care about others is masks. How did we end up in an age where that's a political debate? How did the existence and impact of a virus become a political stance? How is it so easy for people to fall for these flat earth-esque conspiracies and have so little care or compassion for their fellow citizens? The answer to those questions alone could fill pages and pages and pages. Seeing this craziness outside of Shaktak has been heartbreaking at times. The closer to home, the worse it feels, because, at least for me, I always wanted to believe the people I grew up with were fundamentally decent folk. Seeing otherwise from some of them hurts. Seeing the lack of ability to think or care beyond oneself is particularly grotesque. What really gets to me is finding out that after these four crazy years, we'd actually have members within Shaktak supporting wild conspiracy theories outside of it. I'm not talking about members who see themselves as conservative or have expressed a doubt here or there about something. I'm speaking of those who are fully on board the conspiracy train and trapped in a bubble of disinformation. There have only been a handful, but that's more than I ever expected to see. It's been depressing to find them. And it's typically as a result of paths crossing outside of Shaktak, be that via Facebook, Twitter, or otherwise. It's surreal to look at someone you thought you knew and discover that their path has strayed into conspiracy land, or they're just generally okay with supporting the closest thing we've seen to political supervillains in our lifetimes. Seeing that lack of empathy on display, that selfishness, the denial of reality, it's hard to stomach. Some of the worst names in the history of this group align with that sort of mentality. Some of them were here longer than they should have been, because back then, I wasn't paying attention to it the same way I do now. The problem I face this year, in particular, is that I know where those paths led in the past, we've seen how far things have strayed in the larger world recently, and if I could do all that over again, I would have acted on those members immediately to save us all the pain that resulted from waiting. I thought on this for a long time. Eventually, I decided on what the future would hold for Shaktak. Shaktak is generally apolitical. 
politics aren't a discussion topic within Discord or the forums, and are discouraged as a topic elsewhere. We have members with different political mentalities, as with religion, and there's nothing inherently wrong with that. Having said that, there is a distinction worth making between politics and toxicity. Toxicity is against our ethos. We've learned lessons on that the hard way over the years, and particularly recently, we've seen some virulent toxicity rise through politics. Shaktak will not knowingly harbor members who are politically or otherwise ideologically toxic. This includes conspiracy theorists, including election-related, COVID, Gamergate, anti-vax, etc., QAnon supporters, and anything in that realm. If you take things to a toxic extreme, whether within the group or outside of it, you have deviated from what I want as members of this community, and you contaminate the carefully cultivated walled garden that is Shaktak. I've dropped someone for this already, and retrospectively recognize that I essentially dropped others for it in the past. I hope that's the last of it, but if not, so be it. I've read all of your year interviews. I've listened to your feedback. I've seen how this has evolved for 15 years. I would not be making this call if I didn't feel it was absolutely necessary. If this upsets you, you're welcome to bring those issues to me directly, but do so with the understanding that this is a moral stance on my part, and there are no words that will change my mind insofar as toxicity with regards to Shaktak is concerned. We are one team, and there is no place for toxicity here.